Hi everyone, this time last year I reported a sewage spill to Wessex Water and this was their response. I spoke to my boss and um, he said that it's basically nothing to do with us. Now after that phone call and the YouTube video that I made and the and BBC Points West getting hold of the story, I had a, a phone call and an, and an email from a chap called Julian Okaye from Wessex Water who tried to assure me that uh, ninety five percent of the waste that i 'd seen was just general waste and not sewage so at the beginning of January two thousand and twenty four we had storm Henk consequences were considerably worse. I reported the pollution incident and i 'm pleased to say that this time Wessex water have actually acknowledged it so this isn 't a fishing video this is about anglers looking after their rivers and uh, specifically focusing on the issue of sewage in the Bristol Avon. Two weeks ago, at the beginning of January, I reported um, a serious pollution event to Wessex Water and the Environment Agency. It is absolutely everywhere. This stunning bit of river looks like a shanty town. And it goes on for miles. Instead of catching fish, anglers are reeling in wet wipes. It snags up in the wet wipes. I don't have to take it off my hook. As an angler, I suppose, I'm also concerned about what's happening below the surface like I say winding in these wet wipes um, it's a concern you've got the wet wipe island already known in the Thames and I'm worried that we're going to get one here in Salford right there on that and plenty of other things flushed down the toilet have ended up here too you can see a sanitary pad when the river swelled the sewage waste became mixed with litter this stuff visible here it's just the tip of the iceberg I've got friends at fish on the Bristol Channel that are finding the sewage waste on the reefs on the Bristol Channel so it's, it is the whole entire river course where the problem it exists. The rainfall we've had um, recently has been absolutely exceptional, very unusual, very intense, and the whole system was overwhelmed. So more than usual went out, and some of the sewage solids, um, things like wet wipes, were discharged in, in higher quantities than normal. The water companies set aside three million pounds a month to upgrade storm overflows, with plans to double that spending in 2025. We're already improving some overflows upstream of Salford. So a couple of examples, we've got work going on at Lambridge in Bath and at Bradford-on-Avon at the moment. So that's good news, but it's, it's a big problem and it's gonna take a long time to fully resolve. Bristol Radio, Gloucester Radio have all covered it. And once again, we find ourselves just two weeks later looking at the river rising quickly so I thought I'd come down here and just talk a little bit more about these pollution incidents and the uh, unusual amounts of rain, using Wessex Water's words, that are apparently causing their sewage systems to be overrun and emptied into the river. Now this week, Saltford Parish Council put a thank you out to Wessex Water for sending men out on their boats to clean up the river. They obviously haven't made it down here yet. A nappy down there, look, and you can see the sewage waste in the tree behind me. Now, the issue environmentally with these is that you have got an awful lot of plastics in the materials, particularly sanitary pads. That gets broken down, turned into microplastics and into the food chain. One in three fish for human consumption um, has these microplastics in them. So you're eating your sewage waste. There's a lot of pressure at the moment on the manufacturers to reduce plastics in wet wipes, far less on sanitary pads and an industrial wipe. And I think since COVID, people have got into the habit of using these wipes for pretty much anything and everything, not just wiping babies' backsides. People shouldn't be flushing this down the toilet in the first place. So why aren't the Environment Agency doing anything about it? It is an environmental crime in my books. And the simple answer to that is that they're fairly toothless. Um, the regulations are in there, but they can't afford to do the monitoring and enforcement and in fact, in 2015, the Home Secretary at the time gave herself a big pat on the back for reducing their budget by a whopping 54%. Imagine if you did that with the police. You spend all this money on fish passes. They cost tens, if not hundreds of thousands of pounds to put these fish passes in for migration of salmon and sea trout. My friend Ian caught sea trout uh, here just before the floods. And then we go and fill the rivers full of shit. Learning my trade, so to speak, in South East London made me quickly realise just how much we abuse the rivers. That was in uh, the 1990s. Now, where are we now? So there's two combined sewage overflows between 
the Riverside Inn and the Jolly Sailor at Saltford. But what we've got to bear in mind is there's another 50 between here and the other side of Bath. You get an idea of the force of the water when you look at this on this lock gate at the Riverside Inn. It's actually taken away the block paving. This is an area used by swimmers, kayakers, boaters, anglers. And what we're seeing with the wet wipes and the, and the sanitary pads is the tip of the, uh, the, the iceberg because really they just indicate the sheer amount of raw sewage that ends up in this river. As an angler, it's what's going on below that surface. All those wet wipes, they're heavier, they're kept below surface, get washed out to sea uh, or smother the riverbed. There's a microhabitat down there where invertebrates, aquatic insects thrive or did. And um, if we carp it over the top of it, there's not gonna be anything for the fish to eat. There's no fish. There's less kingfishers, there's less otters, and so on. This recent fish survey shows how the fish abundance drops below the weir that I'm stood at now, which is the first red line at the bottom of the map. Once you get past the Jolly Sailor, uh, past the sewage works, the fish abundance drops to just 0 to 1 fish per thousand cubic metres. It is a big problem and it needs to stop. We would like to see off what having stronger powers to make them focus on developing the infrastructure, okay. not lining their own pockets or indeed she paying out those Sir dividends. Robert. Sir Robert, this is, seems to be in some ways a metaphor of the last few years, isn't it? The boss is doing rather well and the rest of us swimming in the poo-poo. Well, uh, the, the reality is that, uh, you know, about eight years ago, only about 800 of our overflow pipes were being monitored. Now 12,000 of the 15,000 are being monitored and we're seeing the full extent of this problem that has been going on for years. Now, what this gentleman is forgetting to acknowledge is that those 800 that were monitored in 2008 were done by the Environment Agency. Now it's the water utility companies marking their own homework. All of us hate to see this happening, including me, but we now know the full extent of this problem. Uh, and the idea that somehow it's related to, you know, private water companies is nonsense. In Wales, which is a not-for-profit uh, arrangement, there are double the number of discharges than in England. Right, let's put some clarity on that straight away. Wales originally was a private company, Hyder, and they went into financial crisis when the Labour Party put a windfall tax on them in 1997. The emerging Welsh water um, was born out of uh, the execs that were at Hyder, um, one of whom was a, a, an ex-merchant banker. And the uh, CEO, Dr Mike Jones, gave himself a £100,000 bonus and a salary of £311,000. Fast forward now, that salary is now £525,000. So it's all about creaming off the money and not investing. Just because they're not paying shareholders doesn't mean they're not fleecing the public. Now that we see the scale of this problem, what to do about it? This is why the plan for water, which has got £1.7 billion of resources to go into dealing with uh, storm discharges, will make a difference. Now, I would well, like I, to I'm going to interrupt you there, because the, the whole idea of privatisation was that things would improve. Yes, and they have. The amount of investment... But this is an improvement. Them, no, no, but this particular issue has now become really apparent because we're monitoring it. Uh, and we wouldn't have known about any problem if it wasn't for the privatisation. So things are better. <laughs> Where did they get him from? Let's bring in Bill it, from the Liberal Democrats. It's, it's an absolutely disgusting situation, isn't it? We've had some, some serious incidents with flooding very similar to the one that you've shown there in, in recent years. But we go back 10 years. We had significant flooding in, in my patch. Mm and we saw sewage effluent go into the homes of the, that were flooded there. It's taken 10 years for Wessex Water to be able to provide, to start working on the solution towards that. That's a, uh, Wessex Water is now owned by a Malaysian multi multinational. Do you think they're getting the message? Do you think the water well, companies are People are making it the message, aren't they? Um, I mean, absolutely. Robert says they've started to do the work, but it's actually the, 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 the exposure it, that people have made to happen that absolutely. has brought this up it's, the agenda. It's, it's, it's organisations like Surface Against Sewage and, and Fergal Sharkey that brought this to, okay. to the public's attention but it is absolutely disgusting yes yeah, so they can pump sewage in that's fine that's legal perfectly legal if it's uh, unusual extreme weather but have we really had 50 extreme weather events over the course of the last year that's where i'd like to see off what and the environment agency doing more to prosecute because in my view we haven't we've all had the long-term forecast models warmer wetter winters and uh yeah, it could have been planned for, couldn't it? We could have got more screening in place on these overflows.
If you want to see where your local combined sewage overflows are, go onto the Rivers Trust website where they've got an interactive map. Wessex Water have funded the local wildlife trust to get water guardians or river guardians out spotting pollution. Are they having a laugh? Are they seriously having a laugh? It worries me that when these <coughs> um, bodies like the Environment Agency that are charged to look after our environment have all their responsibilities passed over to charities and trusts to engage the uh, public, it becomes a PR stunt. Nothing actually gets done.